Paper and Glam family, happy book club Thursday. I am so, so excited to discuss May's read. It is Gift from the Sea. This is one of my all-time favorite reads, so I hope that you guys will consider joining us for this, regardless of whether you read it or not. This book is very aptly titled Gift from the Sea because it is a very deep book. This is one of those books I feel like I could read every year and get something new out of it. It's a super short book. It's 130 pages, but man, you just... Ugh, it, it, it's just every line has so much significance and is so beautifully written. It's just, ugh, it's just full of wisdom. And we are going to talk all about it tonight. And I just, ugh, I just can't wait to hear your thoughts. All right. So we are going to start with our icebreaker while everyone gets checked into the live chat. And our icebreaker for tonight is what is your favorite literary genre and why? So I, as you guys hopefully know, really try to read broadly and I just want to lear learn to love reading of all genres. But if it was up to me and I was just reading like strictly for pleasure, nonfiction is my genre of choice. This book is like my genre of choice. So I just thought that I would, I'd love to hear what your guys' favorite genre is and uh, um, why it's your favorite and why you find yourself gravitating towards it. So let's see. Hayden, you are up first today since Katrina and Sarah are, are doing their best to log on. They're going to be a few minutes late. Well, while I do love a good nonfiction book, because the ones Lisa Marie always picks inspires me, I'm more of a fiction, mystery, crime, thriller, horror type person. It's science fiction. I like stuff that isn't real, because when I read, I want to be taken someplace that I never could have imagined going, or something that someone else has been through to get a new perspective on something that isn't real because real life can be so hard. I want to be transported to something that couldn't possibly be real sometimes. And then sometimes I like to read the mystery novels and try to figure out who did it. I'm really into crime shows. It's actually kind of crazy. My um, addiction to investigation discovery. Um, I'm, um, uh, uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Erica. <laughs> Uh, I think the opposite of Hayden, sort of, in that I gravitate towards more realistic fiction. Um, and most of the time, to um, pick uh, young adult fiction, because I have worked as a youth minister and I worked in um, an orphanage with like 60 preteens to teenagers. Um, and that's just like the group the age group that I've around and even though it's like crazy, it's like, I don't, I'm not, I don't say inspiring, but there's something about it that I just love. Um, so I really enjoy um, stories that, I don't know, deal with issues, but not in a way that it's like an issue book. Um, basically like, people living their lives um, and like the hardships that they face and how they deal with them. Um, but I, I really love a good mystery. Um, that's favorite, um, which is weird because I never liked mystery stuff growing up because it freaked me out. And I had like going to sleep for like years because of some mystery stuff that I watched when I was little. Um, but now, like, that's what I want, and I don't care if, like, I can't sleep afterwards or while I'm in the middle of it because I just enjoy, like, trying to figure out how they're going to solve it or um, who did it or whatever the mystery is. I'm so sorry, Erica. Cindy. <laughs> Got a little ahead of myself. <laughs> I missed last month, so I'm a little excited to be back. <laughs> so um, my favorite uh, genre is fiction as well. Um, I'm a huge fan of uh, uh, chiclet, um, that kind of thing. Um, I'm probably the opposite of Hayden and Erica in the sense that um, I don't want to think. Uh, I'm just give me the fluff, um, make me laugh, make me cry, entertain me. Um, I just uh, I really enjoy a good read. Um, one of my favorite authors is, uh, um, most of my favorite authors are, are chick lit authors. Um, you know, I, I, um, yeah, anyway, I'll, I'll stop there. Okay. Um, I enjoy fiction 
also and oddly enough i like young adult which might seem so weird because i'm so far from that age group but um i enjoy it because i don't know i feel like it's like right there in the midst of kind of like self-discovery like with that age range like um you know you know what path a person is going to take or where they're going to go at that particular age so i i i do enjoy that i and it also reminds me of like um, when I was reading the most, which was when I was a young adult, because you know you have more time. So um, I'm, I don't know. I'm just always surprised that I can, you know, if I happen to have one, if I happen to read one, that I really enjoy it. It's just like I don't know. It just seems so fun. Like it's not too deep. It's not too. I don't. I like. I don't want to think too much. I want to laugh or just be. I don't know. Just it just seems fun. Like in a fun just like fun read. So that's usually what I enjoy. I keep repeating myself, but yeah, that's mine. <laughs> Thank you guys. I love reading the comments. We all gravitate towards different genres. Like it's very diversified, both in the book chatters and uh, also in the comments, which is fun. I know I think if Sarah was here, which she will be here shortly, she can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think she's similar to Hayden with book choices and Katrina is all about fiction and mystery too. So very interesting. All right, so then we'll get into our official questions for the night. And the first one is, uh, how did you experience reading Gift from the Seas and Sea? And how many uh, stars would you rate it? So no surprise, I shared that this is one of my all-time favorite books. Um, I, I read it for the first time three or four years ago. It was actually recommended by Shauna Nyquist, who is one of my all-time favorite authors, who I force on you guys almost every week. And <laughs> she's amazing. So she recommended it, and I was like, okay. And then she had recommended it alongside like a bunch of books that I had read and completely loved, so I knew I was going to love it. And I read it when I was in Denver, and I was like, okay, the next time I read this book, I'm going to be living in L.A., and I'm going to be reading it on the beach. And this was – three years ago at a point in my life where, you know, like before everything works out, like nothing works out and it's like a really hard season at times. Well, that's, I, I was in one of those seasons and I promised myself next time I read it, it's going to be on the beach and I'm going to experience it as it was written. So on Tuesday, I kind of spontaneously ran away from home. I could not sleep. I just could not bring myself to work. I was just a little bit feeling burnt out, you know, and I was like, okay, I am gonna go for a run on the beach and bring gift from the sea and I'll be back at like 10 and I'll start working. Uh, yeah, I pretty much ran away and I didn't come home until like 8 p.m. and I ended up just having the best day like being a tourist and walking around Hermosa Beach and then my mom ended up meeting me for dinner and it was such a fun, beautiful day. But as I sat down to read this book on the beach, she said, I too have run away. I have shed the shell of my life. And I was like, oh, that's exactly what I feel like. I just shed the shell of my life and I'm like someone else for a day. and you know, this is so sad and it like really is a testament to how much of a workaholic I am and how far I need to come because this, I've been dreaming of reading on the beach since I, before I even moved to LA and I've lived here for almost two years and this was my first time reading on the beach. I'd only been to the beach to like shop or, you know, uh, meet friends or something, but I'd never been like just to like hang out and relax. So anyway, that was my experience reading Gift from Missy. How about you, Hayden? Unfortunately, living in Bend, I'm about six hours away from any beach, but I was pleasantly surprised at how much I really enjoyed the book. I mean, I figured I would since you, Lisa Marie loved it so much, but I didn't really know what to expect because I've never even heard of the book. But her writing was just so beautiful, and the way she talks about being a woman, even though it was back in what I think was maybe the 50s or 60s, is still so relevant to how most of us are portrayed or live our lives today and how we, I, I know we'll get more into it, but anyway, I gave the book five stars. I really enjoyed it and I was really pleasantly surprised. Um, I really enjoyed this book too. Um, um, I had planned to go back. I started reading it um, at the end of last month um, and I was going to read like a chapter or so at a time and then go back and reread it. Um, but it happened that it didn't get done. Um, and, uh, so I kind of feel like, like all of my specific points that I enjoyed about it are kind of foggy now, but, um, just, I, it was just the whole idea of like, I, I've always felt like a connection to the beach, like as much as we can 
um, my husband and I like to go there for our anniversary um, and just like get away kind of like she does in this book as she's writing it. Um, uh, but just um, having, like I've always seen the ocean and the beach and that whole area as like a metaphor for life. So to um, just see it written out on the page in fashion, um, I really enjoyed it. Um, I would give it, I don't know, like four, four and a half stars. Um, don't want to give it five stars and maybe it's because I wanted more from it. Like I didn't want it to end. So I don't know if that would be a five star read or um, half, but um, yeah. I mean, I, I really enjoyed it, so somewhere. I really enjoyed it too, um, and I gave it a, a four star as well. Um, I thought it was um, good uh, from the beginning, reading it from cover to cover, um, but with books like this, I like to uh, Google the author just to get to know um, kind of where her thoughts are coming from and who she, he or she is. Um, and when I read about her and more specifically about who she was um that actually made the book a little more special for me as well um because i i definitely have a lot of uh respect for what she did in her lifetime um i love the uh, the theme of the book obviously she ties into the to the sea and memories and uh talks about um you know the 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 cycle of the tide and um yeah of course the seasons of our lives are, are just are as cyclical as um, the the seasons of the weather. So um, I love how she tied that in. So uh, yeah, I give it a four out of five for sure. So, you know, I'm odd girl out tonight. <laughs> I, I gave the book three stars. Um, I feel strange about this book. I, um, I felt like I, I love the idea about, you know, being on the beach because I love the beach. I like that she did the thing with the seashells, but I kept like kind of, I don't know, I'm, I'm listening to the book. So um, I kept feeling like I wasn't listening sometimes and I felt like like I would just zone out and then I would go like it just felt in times like it was self-helpy and I, I despise anything self-help. So I just, I don't know, it was like in and out, but there was, whenever I was felt like I was focusing, like I was like, okay, she said a couple of things that, oh, I like, I, I can, I can get with that. But then there were times like I was driving and it was making me sleepy and I was like, what is going on with this book? So I don't know if it's because of the way I experienced the book that it didn't like grab me. Um, so maybe it's just not a good listen, but it was very difficult for me to focus on it and um, really hard for me to, I don't know, I just couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't get into it. I felt like there were moments where it felt rambly. I don't know. So uh, it's hard, but I, I, I go with a three star. Awesome. Well, it sounds like everyone enjoyed the book and there's, we got three, I think there was one 2.5 and other than that it was all three and four and a lot of fives so I'm really glad that you guys loved this pick it's been really special to me and it really touched my life and I'm glad that uh, it touched a lot of your lives too that's what it's all about all right so the next question is what was your favorite quote or concept shared in gift from the sea so I'm gonna go last because I basically highlighted like my entire book is like nothing but highlighting it was one of those things where I was like I'm gonna highlight like the entire book if I don't stop so I'll go last because I'm sure there'll be one that, <laughs> that hasn't been said yet. So, Hayden, what was your favorite quote? I, too, have so many um, bookmarks, so I was trying to hurry up and figure out which one I wanted to name my favorite. So I went with uh, page 89, and it's um, at the top. It's like the first paragraph when you get to that page, and it says, Perhaps both men and women in America may hunger and our material outward active masculine culture culture for the supposed sorry supposedly feminine qualities of heart mind and spirit qualities which are actually neither masculine nor feminine but simply human qualities that have been neglected it is growth along these lines that will make us whole and will enable the individual to become world become world to himself and that just really touched me because that's true these qualities that most people back in her time considered feminine qualities were really just human qualities. I mean, every person wants to feel that, wants to have a full heart, a bright mind, and a full spirit and live life to the fullest. And I just thought she really touched on that in a very eloquent and lovely way in that paragraph. 
Okay. Um, the part that I marked is actually really long, so I'm just going to read the end of it. Um, it's towards the end. I have a different copy than probably most of you because my page numbers aren't matching up to what other people are saying. Um, it's towards the end of um, the seventh chapter, A Few Shells. Um, she's talking about um, how the island selects, like, basically her social um, and uh, how we tend to kind of isolate ourselves. We move to the suburbs because we have um, uh, same interests and stuff. Um, and she says, we tend not to choose the unknown, which might be a shock or disappointment or simply a little difficult to cope with. And yet it is the unknown with all its disappointments and surprises that is the most enriching. And um, this is one of those things that like I know and I wanna be better at doing but I'm such first place and I live like out like I, I live on acreage so it takes like 15 minutes to get to like um and so um and my I don't work outside of the home so I don't have a lot of interaction with different um but I know that it's good for me um, but I also know that it like gives me anxiety to like seek it out. Um, so I just thought it was a good reminder that like difficult and it might be um, uncomfortable that um, it's good and it can end up being some of the most enriching experiences of your life. Uh, one of my favorite um, quotes uh, is from page 102. Um, it says, perhaps the most important thing for me to take back from beach living sim is simply the memory that each cycle and tide is valid. Each cycle of the wave is valid. Each cycle of a relationship is valid. My shells, I can sweep them all into my pocket. They are only there to remind me that the sea recedes and returns eter um, eternally. And uh, I really like that because um, to me, it kind of spoke, uh, it spoke to the different uh, seasons in our lives and, you know, where uh, if something is really good, you can kind of um, hold on to the shells. Um, but if, you know, you're in a tough season of your life, you, you sit tight, it's temporary. Um, and that, uh, that too, too will uh, come to pass just like the waves. All right. Well, my favorite quote is on the oh. bottom of, oh, sorry, sorry. sorry. Go ahead. I'm so sorry. No, look at me. I'm jumping. I'm getting ahead. <laughs> no, it's great. I'm, I'm happy that you're excited about it. Um, I just have the one that I liked, which she says, um, women need solitude in order to find, again, the true essence of themselves. Um, because that's me. <laughs> like, I definitely, um, after having kids, have discovered that to be so true. You need that time where you're just even if it's a few minutes, like it just feels so good because you recharge yourself and you're just like, you're, you know, even though this was written most in the fifties or so, like, it's like so true today. We do need to take some time and like, just be quiet and be still and like refresh yourself. I mean, I don't know if everybody has that privilege of going, you know, to a beach by themselves. I mean, that sounds awesome, but, um, you know, even if you can, within yourself, get a few minutes, just go and shut a door and just get a little bit of time. I think that's wisdom that she was talking about there. So that thought was a nice quote that I could relate to. All right, thanks, Tab. Okay, now it's my turn. <laughs> so at the bottom of 45 is my quote here. And so keeping in mind that this book was first written in 1955, so that's when it first came out. And that, keeping that fact in mind, this quote just blows me away. She says, the feminists did not look that far ahead. They, down, they laid down no rules of conduct. For them, it was enough to demand the privileges. The exploration of their use, as in all pioneer movements, was left open to the women who would follow. And women today, and women today is still searching. We are aware of our hunger and needs, but still ignorant of what will satisfy them. And she's talking about, you know, how even in the 50s women were entering the workforce and you know what that was kind of doing to their home life and 
how they didn't have kind of that solitude that they used to have and the you know time alone to be creative in creative tasks that were or chores for lack of a better word that were kind of creative tasks like baking bread is one of the examples she uses and i just think that's so insightful and the first time i read this book i was working full time in an office and then i was on call you know nights and weekends so i pretty much had to work around the clock and i was just like and i never i wasn't the only one there's many mothers in that situation and i'm not even a mom right i'm single i don't have kids my life will never be any simpler and i could not even make it work like with the laundry and just like everything that has to be done just to like make, keep the wheels on life you know and so she what she said there about how you know we as women that we advocate so deeply for you know equal pay and like all the things that that women before us have fought for and are still fighting for but it's like we still are working out like how that all is going to work out you know like of course you know we, i am so grateful that we are able to get jobs and, and and in industries that are traditionally masculine you know i work i working in it it's like pretty much everyone was male, it felt like. And, you know, that wasn't necessarily true, but it kind of starts to, to feel like that. I remember my first job, I was one of two women in, in the office. And at that point, I was a commercial real estate broker. So anyway, I'm kind of on a tangent here, but I don't know. Like, I just feel like that that's, this is like the task of our generation. And maybe it's because, you know, I started Paper and Glam with so much of this heart that it's like, it's like my, what I want to work out in my lifetime is like how to make all this life work together and how to live a, you know, holistic life that really works together. And like one area feeds the next area and, and on and on. So anyway, that, that particular quote just really, really resonated with me is it's, I feel like my generation is not so much the generation that's going to fight for feminist rights, but, to, but figure out how to exercise them and, you know, still not, not lose ourselves in the process. So yeah. All right. So number three. Oh, I'm bummed Katrina and Sarah didn't haven't been able to join yet. Sarah's jetting back from the airport and Katrina has an appointment, like I said, but I want to hear everybody's everybody's thoughts on this book. So hopefully we'll bother them when they get here with answering all the questions rapid fire. <laughs> Just kidding. Only if they want to. All right. So number three, solitude and simplicity. So these Oh, these chapters were so, so good. So our question is, solitude and simplicity are presented as prerequisites for a spiritual life. Did Anne Marl Lindbergh's thoughts on solitude and or simplicity inspire you to plan for and achieve simplicity in your own crowded uh, 21st century life? So I don't know if you guys want to tackle both of those or just choose one. I almost wanted to do two separate questions, but then I felt like it might be a little bit, you know, uh, redundant. So I will, I will go last because I feel like I'm just going to talk in a circle and talk your guys' ears off. So Hayden, what do you, what were your thoughts on the chapters on solitude and simplicity? It's kind of funny that we read this book for me because Roman and I have been really trying to start the minimalist lifestyle. Like we've been looking at tiny houses. We've been looking at land to build one because we're just realizing that we have bought into this life of having to have more when that that isn't what fills your heart up what fills your heart up is spending time with the people that you love and yourself and being creative and enjoying life so it's kind of funny that we read this because it really touched my heart to read those chapters and see how she had to go find herself and i won't lie you know we all know that i'm from alabama obviously and i live in oregon so i ran 3,000 miles away from everything in Alabama to kind of find myself. And I can't say that had I stayed in Alabama, I'd still be the same person that I am today. And I'm really proud of all that growth. So I just really connected with her on that level of self growth and trying to be simple and yet still have a full life with the, your church, your community and still build people up and remember to keep your, I'm starting to ramble. Sorry. Cause I just got really like passionate. <clears throat> but remembering to keep your your self as number one is not a selfish thing and I think that's really hard for people like Lisa Marie and Cindy and Erica and Tabitha and Sarah and Jaina and Katrina because we're all givers and when you give too much of yourself away there's nothing left for you to be creative and grow on so I just felt like the the book uh, anyway sorry I just got on a tangent <laughs> go ahead Erica I kind of feel like that's how I'm going to end up too. Cause I'm like, I know what I want to say, but I can't figure out the words. Um, yeah. When in another country, um, 
for a period of about nine months, maybe 10. Um, and when we were there, we spent a lot of time like in our house um, talking about life um, and what we wanted out of life and how we would achieve it and what we didn't need. Um, and we came back and we were like, okay, we're going to live like really simple lives, which when like you're living somewhere where all you have to do is like go get your food and then make it and hang out with some kids for a while and then go home and sit and talk about life. Um, so it's a lot harder to do when you're, you know, you have jobs, um, and you add kids into that and they have busy schedules. Um, but we still have tried to maintain, like, we want to have simple lives. Like we limit our kids to one, like extracurricular activity so that our schedules don't fill up. Their schedules don't fill up. Um, we eat at home pretty much every night, which means to, you know, prepare for that and have food on hand because like I said, the grocery store's far away. Um, and just like taking time to think about those simple things. And then also we're both introverts. So we realized the importance of like to be alone. Um, it's actually one of the reasons that we moved out here was so that my husband could like walk around in the woods after he spent all day, um, basically talking nonstop, uh, teaching kids, um, uh, and just like knowing that that's an important part of what we need. We probably need a whole lot more than, um, like extroverted people, um, you know, days on my own and still be fine. Um, but, uh, yeah, just making sure that we're taking time to spend time alone. Else, like for me, that's writing, um, or doing something else creative, like she talks about in the book, finding some creative outlet, whatever that is. Um, I don't, just finding things that help your life in some way be simple, however you can do that, whether it's by cutting something out or doing something like on your own. Uh, so yeah, I'll go to Cindy now, so I'm not. <laughs> well, I'm going to keep it really simple. I don't have anything profound to say. Um, basically, what this book reminds, puts me in mind of and reminds me is um, the whole gas mask analogy where you have to put your mask on first before you can help someone else. So um, that's basic brass tacks, brass tacks of what I get from the book that uh, you know, take care of me so that I can take care of everyone else, which obviously is easier than said and done, which is why there's so many books written about it and why we're all challenged with it. I agree with you, Cindy, on that one, but I, I, I think that that would be like the takeaway for me from, from the book about simplicity, because I think it's like we all know that we'd probably be better off <laughs> with the simpler life, but we just, we haven't, exactly figured out how to do that and I think that um, it's encouraging to try to say okay how can I how can I how can I make this that I've heard of and that I know how can I make it practical um, so that you know that we're not dealing with everyday craziness which you know dealing with kids and getting them off to school is like a morning craziness so if I can figure out how to simplify that that would be awesome um, but I do think that um, I like that she put that in the book and and she's talking to women about, you know, that, you know, that that should be a priority for us, like, you know, to have some of the simple things and 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 have like just, the, you know, just to get in that mind space and like we hear it, but we hear it. Like I said, this was in the 50s, but we hear it all the time now, like, you know, you know, do some yoga, you know, get in the Zen, like do your five minutes of, of you like pray or whatever to, to because we, we think that it's, you know, it's going to be better for us. So that is a motivator to say, yeah, I need to actually apply this, not just hear about it. Okay, I'm all right. Thank you, Tabitha. Oh, Sarah was beating me to it. I was going to say, Sarah's here. She rushed back from the airport to join us. So thank you so much for, for doing that, Sarah. And you can just, we're on three, but you just take one, two, and three, choose one. You just do you. 
Okay. Um, um, I catch up on the first three. Um, I enjoyed the book. Probably give it. I. I didn't hate it. It was a little philosophical for me, um, and since I struggle. Um, I was a little bit like shell shocked reading this one because it was it felt very so um, I felt a little shell shocked, but I did enjoy it. I got some good nuggets out of it. Um, I took a lot of notes in the um, what was it chapter five, the oyster bed about. I think that was um, some good stuff for me to um, maybe unpack a little bit more. I'm an introvert like so I don't I don't function um, and fortunately my husband is semi introverted as well you spend time alone and that's not um, a problem for either of us so I really and I find solitude so valuable to recharging and being able to be me to operate in life and um, maybe the friend and stepmom and wife and dog um, I, yeah i find solitude very very valuable in that. all right <laughs> sarah sadly you're breaking up a little bit so I don't know if there's anything you can do for your internet connection. I know that happened to me one time and it was, there was nothing I could do, but just let you know, you're usually nice and clear. Okay. So for, for me, I guess, Oh, I don't know. Solitude or simplicity. So I guess I'll just try and try and make this brief. So solitude, I'm an only child. I am definitely an introvert and you would think I would have this one down and I do to an extent, but, um, really at the beach, on Tuesday, I just realized like, oh, this was the best thing. Like I just felt the colors of my life, like flooding back, you know, things when I get too tired and I've been working too much, you know, life kind of gets a little bit gray around the edges. And then I go and I spend time alone and I spend time in nature and I'm like, oh, like the color is back in my world. And I just realized like I work so hard to live in LA and to have access to the beach. And it's like, I don't even take advantage of it, <laughs> in which case, <laughs> what's the point, right? So I really really just like have made a commitment that I want to take kind of, I want to run away, like probably not once a week cause that's not super realistic, but maybe every other week weekends are really busy in LA just traffic wise. So for me, like it's ideal that I can, you know, work from home and go during the week. But I definitely am planning probably every other week to go just read on the beach, go for a run on the beach, both, you know, I really just want to get out and, and enjoy enjoy nature and enjoy the city. And I don't, I don't allow myself to take time. I don't know about you guys, but I'm always like, Oh, you know, maybe next week I'll be caught up on my to-do list, which is always, you know, a mile long and I'll have videos up and all the, everything in the shop and I'll be all caught up, which is never going to happen. Right. And then pretty soon, like two years goes by. So really just committing to get getting away because I'm definitely alone in my house. You know, I live alone um, during the day, my sweet little team's here and and whatnot. So I'm not, you know, by myself during the day, but you know, I do get my solitude in, but I'm realizing it's not nearly as restful here at home. And I don't know if that's because I work from home or just because I need to get out, but I was just so much more rested, uh, you know, experiencing a day, a day out of the house. So that is my, my kind of what I'm working on from solitude perspective. And then simplicity, man, like you guys said, this one is a tough one. Um, you know, life in LA is like, if anything is like not simple at all, there's a grocery stores everywhere, but getting there takes I probably, it takes me longer to get there than you, Erica, even though they're just like, I'm going in within walking distance. So I've tried to keep my life very simple and that like everything I do and like all of my family is in this little tiny area and most of my friends too, which is great. Uh, there's like a joke that you can't like date anyone who doesn't live in like your little community of LA because you'll like never see them or you'll spend your whole life in the car. <laughs> and there's like a, a like geographically undesirable uh, <laughs> joke about LA because it, like you really do have to center your life life, like in a certain part of the city or, you know, you'll just spend your life in the car. So I've done a good job that way. And yeah, I mean, 
I try not to have too many commitments, but there's always like more I want to do. So it's like, there's just like that constant push pull. I would say like, I'd love to be more involved in my church. I'd love to, you know, just do so many things. Um, but I don't because I'm like, no, your schedule's already crazy. And I don't know. I would say like I constantly declutter and physical space tends to bleed into your mental space. I declutter once a week and I donate once a month. I just have a, a, a donation box constantly on the brink of, of being full. And, and that really helps me like keeping my space uncluttered. And, you know, I say that and it's like the hoarders episode of book junkies behind me, but you know, it's, it, it's hard. It's a, it's a work in progress. So I feel like I could talk about simplicity and solitude all day. So we'll, we'll keep it moving here. All right. Next question is, oh, and I love this. This is my favorite question. All right. On page 91, Anne Mara Lindbergh writes, my life will never become like this day, a perfect, one plucked out of a holiday week. There is no perfect, there are no perfect lives. One, but one perfect day gives clues for a more perfect life, the mythical life. She then goes on to describe her perfect day and reflect on what made it so wonderful. Did a piece of this day or a concept she shared speak to you um, to like make you reconsider your daily routine or your weekly routine. So we talked about this some in the nest, but I am like fascinated by routine because I really do feel like whatever routine you build into your life sets you up for success or doesn't. So this concept just fascinated me and oh, I reread this chapter like three times because it just, it just totally blew me away. It was so simple, but just her recounting her day, just, ugh, it just, stuck with me. So Hayden, before I talk in five circles, why don't I pass it over to you and then I'll, I'll wrap up. <laughs> oh, wait, sorry. I totally am going to cut you off because just in case somebody hasn't read the book, I just want to, and I, it's kind of an ab abstract question. So, um, she recounts her day on, let's see, it's right here, 92 and 93. So just really quickly, cause I know people join that haven't necessarily read or don't have the book. And I love that. So I want to make this super accessible. So she says, the morning swim, she's, this is her recounting her day. The morning swim has the nature of a blessing to me, a baptism, a rebirth to the beauty and wonder of the world. We run back tingling to hot coffee on our small back porch. With legs in the sun, we laugh and plan our day. And I'm skipping ahead a little so I don't talk about this for the next five minutes. Read, read from the book for the next five minutes. She says, we wash the dishes lightly to no system for there are are not enough to matter. Since our communication seems more important to us than our chores, the chores are done without thinking. And then to work. What release to work so that one forgets oneself, forgets one's companion, forgets where one is or what one is going to do next, to be drenched in work as one is drenched in sleep or in sea. And then, pricked by hunger, we rise at last in a daze for a late lunch, reeling a little from our incense and from our intense absorption. We come back with relief to, to the small chores of getting lunch, as if they were lifelines to reality, as if we had indeed almost drowned in the sea of intellectual work and welcomed the firm ground of physical action under our feet. We return, and then she talks about going out in the afternoon, and we return at dusk to the warmth and intimacy of our cottage. We ship Sip sherry at leisure in front of the fire. We start supper and we talk. And then on and on it goes. And I love how she says, afternoon is for physical tasks, the out of door jobs. The evening is for sharing, for communication. Is it the interrupted dark expanse of the night after the bright segment in day that frees us to each other? And then, and previously she says the morning is for like intellectual tasks. And she kind of, she breaks out her day and, and talks about how that day covered you know, the spiritual piece of her life, the physical piece of her life, the intellectual piece of her life and the relational piece of her life. And I love that because I'm just all about trying to learn how to live holistically and that she just did it in such a simple, concrete way. So, all right, without further ado, Hayden, what were your thoughts? Well, I unfortunately got a glimpse earlier in life about what it means to try to live your life to the fullest and have a perfect day every day. Because I think about all the time, if if my mom could go back and redo things in her life, what would she do to make her life more, more holistic and more about the things she enjoyed doing and not just work? So my work is very um, time consuming, but I have managed to finally get it to where I don't work more than 40 hours a week. And I try every day to plan something fun with either Roman or my girlfriends or just talking to my girlfriends or something like that in order to feel like I'm living a perfect day every day. Now, do I get to do that every day? No. 
but I really strive to do that, especially with all the books we've read in book club to have a more holistic lifestyle. Like there's more to life than just getting up, eating breakfast, going to work, coming home, watching TV, going to bed and doing it all every single day. There's so much to see in this world. I mean, I have hundreds of hikes literally in my backyard and I've probably been on two. So I made that a goal after reading this book to really get out and try to enjoy the nature that surrounds me in order to connect more with my own self as well as the people in my life that I care about. As I was reading this, um, it really resonated with me because this is kind of the um, um, natural rhythm of my life. Um, like, um, the writing work, um, the more mental type work in the mornings. Um, even though I'm not a morning person, I tend to be able to focus better um, in the morning on those tasks. And then noons, you know, cleaning bathrooms or preparing whatever I have to get ready for um, dinner beforehand um, or, you know, going and running errands if I need to do that. Um, and then the evening is when I, I spend time with my kids when they get home from school. Um, and then my husband gets home from his job and, you know, we have dinner and spend time together. And then after the kids are in bed, older and the time gets smaller and smaller before we go to bed. But my husband and I try to spend some time together. Um, I mean, sometimes it's just like reading in the same room together. Um, and you know, then we're there for like, hey, listen, this is pretty cool. This is what this author wrote or whatever. Um, but um, it doesn't mean it always happens. It doesn't mean that um, it's an ideal day by any stretch of the imagination. Um, I just, I was like, oh, okay, maybe, maybe I've actually finally figured out something that actually does work for my life because I've tried all these different things and like doing work all day on certain days. And then this day I'll do this kind of work. And, um, but what she talks about here, like kind of separating the morning, afternoon, and evening I found for me has worked, um, with how I tend to organize my life. Um, so yeah, I just, as I was reading this, I was like, Oh, okay. So I'm not the only person that, found that those those rhythms can be that you can hold tight to and aspire to get to every day even though it doesn't always happen that way it was interesting reading uh, her perspective on the uh, having a perfect day and uh, to me when I was reading it um, I thought her the way she described her perfect day uh, it, it was almost like all the stuff, it, it was like perfect equated to the word happy in the way she was talking about all the tasks that she was doing and maybe um, finding happy in those tasks. And I think that's why she kept using the word perfect. Like this is even the chores that she had to do. She kind of went at it and felt good about it and did it at her pace at a time that worked for her. Um, so for me, I think that, um, you know, looking at it uh, as a, in a, on a broader scale, yeah, we don't, not every day is going to be perfect and not every day is going to be happy. But I think when we have the opportunity to have those happy days, I think that that gives us um, uh, hope that, uh, you know, uh, although maybe today is not the happiest day, tomorrow could be a happy day. And then you have a really good, perfect, happy day. And then there's hope to kind of endure all the other stuff that, that of course, life brings. Um, I think it's a, a good takeaway um, when, you know, she was talking about the breakdown, like she mentioned morning, afternoon, night, but which kind of reminds me of like, you know, the Erin Condren planner, like how you can break it down morning and, and noon and night and how having order can, I believe having order can bring peace. So I've never been like a organ, you know, like a, 
I wasn't before having kids, I wasn't really that organized as far as like making sure you had a routine, but having kids has forced me into a routine and I now see the beauty in it where before it, it was frustrating for me to get there because I was just like, oh, I'm forced to do this, 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 but it actually makes things run smoother. Um, so I, that that's a takeaway for me is having like a breakdown as far as like, but I think that sometimes like if you're going to have a, if, if you have this idea in your head about a perfect day, you need to have in your head the idea that even if something it's not going to, it's not going to run smoothly, there might be like bumps along the way, but then if there is a bump, like you'll still be able to handle it and the rest of the day can still be perfect because I think sometimes if we have a bad day or or something happened in a day that throw off our rhythm we think that the rest of the day is going to be bad and I don't think that that's um productive thought but but that's something that I can take away from when she was talking about a perfect day okay I really enjoy I thought it was interesting it occurred to me I hate to write so the writing portion is horrible to me because it's just not that I would not include that but it kind of occurred to me that um, you know do what you love and you'll never work a day in your life and so that, I don't know, it just, um, and so I just, I, I started a new job recently and I really enjoy it. And I, I, I like it. And so it hasn't felt as hard as it could. Um, of, I don't know. Real, um, and I just liked the easiness of her, she and her sister doing chores together and an office. Um, I don't know, that was kind of my perspective. Yeah, so when she talked about writing, I think we just, I actually, when I read the quote, I actually like inserted work where she said writing because I think it's like whatever we do for work, you know, whatever like that intellectual piece of our day is. And I, I like Erica, I have tried so many different things like to try and establish a, a routine and this has been like an ongoing thing as soon as i think i get it down like a circumstance changes and you know it's it's hard i've tried like some people recommend like you know on tuesdays and thursdays like i would do like nothing but design and on wednesday i would work on like the actual like it piece of the shop and like mondays and wednesday I'd do videos or whatever you know and it just it does not work for me. That does not work for me. Like I personally thrive on having like a routine that unfolds every day and, and is similar every day. Like I can't like switch gears like that. And I do find that the mornings are like my intellectual time. Like the, if I have any like hard things I need to write or, you know, emails I need to respond to that are going to take a lot of brain power. You know, I've been working on writing the God and Glam Bible study, which is going to start uh, this fall. It's going to start, the kickoff is November 26th, because I know you guys want to, you want to know. It kicks off with Advent, if you're wondering why November 26th. But, um, and we'll be talking more and more about it. But anyway, I've been writing that, like, first thing in the morning, and spending an hour writing the Bible study from, like, 6 to 7 every morning, and that's kind of, like, my solitude, and getting back to really spending time alone with, you know, with, the Lord first thing and getting that solitude piece in and then also the intellectual piece in and, um, you know, then like the, the, the work work and then like getting, going to the gym for the physical and then, you know, going out and like getting my errands done before the traffic starts up about like about three. And then, uh, at night I'll usually go out with friends or I'll meet, go to my mom's for dinner, or, you know, do something, do something at night or I'll just, you know, like have a night in and, and read, which for me is like very, very restful. So, just being okay with my routine. And I, I just, I love, I've never heard a perspective like hers where she said like every day I should have that, like, you know, mental, spiritual, physical, and, um, relational and every day. Like that just is brilliant to me. And I don't even know why I didn't think of it myself because, you know, I, I have this whole glam goal setting way that I set goals. It's exactly like that. Like that's how I like plan my year. And I don't know, like it just like blew, blew my, my, my head <laughs> off of my shoulders here because 
it was just so easy and it just made so much sense. And I've been searching for a way to make everything work like on a day to day basis. And because I feel like I'm like not doing it right or something. So anyway, I will, I will stop rambling because this is like right in my wheelhouse. So we, I could talk your guys' ear off about this. Okay. So number five, is this a book for our times? 35 to 40 years into the women's movement. Does it speak to modern life less so less or more so than when it was first written and what gift from the sea will you take away and apply to your own life? So, you know, this is a little bit more of the same, but I just kind of wanted to give everyone a, a chance to, uh, you know, share any last thoughts if they have them on gift from the sea. And then just, I, I personally am just so blown away by how re relevant this book is now. I feel like it's more relevant now than it was, you know, in, in 1955. And obviously I wasn't alive in 1955 and maybe, maybe that's not true, but I, I just, I mean, I felt like it was just talking to, to, to exactly where we are in our, in our world. So I don't really have any, any last thoughts, but uh, Hayden, how about you? I don't know what happened. It kicked me out and now it's showing me twice. So I'm just going to try. Um, I will say that the stuff she touched on about being a woman in the 1950s is, even though we've come so far when it comes to the being a feminist or whatever that means to you, because I'm obviously not going to get political, but whatever that means to you, we have gained so much momentum to be able to do the things that we want to do that make us happy, but we're still kind of stuck in the 1950s because we still have to fight so hard for every cent that we make and every achievement that we make to be bet to be just as good as a man. So I don't know how long it's going to take to get to a point where we're not constantly compared to a man, but I will say that I love being involved in a strong sisterhood with paper and glam and that gives me hope for the future. I definitely think that this book is still relevant um, like Lisa Marie was saying, maybe even more so now, especially with like the thoughts on um, simplicity and solitude that we talked about, um, really fast paced world. Um, and what I was going to say just flew out of my head. So um, yeah, I'm just going <laughs> to pass it on to you, Cindy. <laughs> All right. Um, uh, I think that the book transcends time um, because um, the quest to be one's best self is just human nature. And I think that that's always going to be part of um, every individual's story at some level. So I think the book will always be relevant. Um, uh, like Hayden said, I, the, the degrees might vary, but I think, uh, I think if we read the book again in 20 years from now, I think we'll, we'll glean something, maybe something different or maybe um, in that stage of our lives, maybe um, we'll have a different perspective, so it'll mean something different. So, um, you know, th this type of book, absolutely, it's gonna transcend the years. And uh, I would be interested, I'm gonna obviously hold on to my copy and, and maybe bring it out in five years or maybe in 10 years and, and read my side notes and, and kind of compare uh, what I think now versus what I think then and I would have loved to have read this in my my 20s or, or you know and just kind of had my Cindy perspective at that time so um, yeah the answer to the question is yeah absolutely I think it's relevant to, to our times and I think it's going to be relevant in the future as well yeah I agree I think that you know there's definitely some nuggets like you said that that can be pulled from what she had to share um, which, you know, I'm the type of person I believe that with anyone's story or um, um, some of the things that they might have experienced in life whenever they have a, an opportunity to share that, that, um, you know, if we do take the time to be still and listen, that there is something that we can take away from it, even if it's one, even if it's one tip or even if it's one item. So um, I would say that I, there's definitely something that I could take away from it, even though it, you know, wasn't like a, um, it was only a three star read for me. Um, but I don't know, I would even consider going back and, and rereading some or re-listening or reading for the first time some sections just 
um, after having this moment with you guys to see what you've pulled away from it to go, okay, well, maybe I need to try and just read some segments instead of um, listening um, to the book. So, um, because I, I do like if someone's able to write and, you know, years later, you're able to kind of pick pick up on it and pick something up. Because um, I don't know, to me, that says something that, you know, hey, like, it, that is still, this is still, something was tapped in that, that we're all can, you know, gleam from right now. So I would say yes. Yeah, I totally, I totally think it's, still relevant i mean obviously because we all took pretty valuable nuggets away from it um and i think you know i mean yes despite um that we live in a different climate and women have a different role in their household by and large than they did you know 50 years ago um i think i think it's still totally applicable to modern day um and super relevant and um i totally agree you know about going back and reading and um you know looking at my notes again in a couple of years i think even then it'll have different nuggets um and just even more insight at that point yeah i'm kind of kicking myself for not using a different highlighter you know because i use i use the same kind of hot pink sharpie highlighter they're my favorite i've been using them for years so i i highlighted like new things this time and i'm like darn i should have highlighted like in a different color to mark like what stuck out to me in the, you know, my second reading, because one thing that really stuck out to me in this season of life was on page 86. This is kind of wrapping up. I know we're coming up on time and I, I don't want to take too much of your evenings, but she says, she's talking about really a, a really solid relationship. And she says it must have grown like all firm rooted growth slowly. And I've just been so focused on, on slow growth and, and, embracing slow growth for, for paper and glam and for myself. And, you know, it can be so hard in our instant society where like, you know, everything is supposed to be in five seconds. Like we hear about people who started companies and, you know, they've like a year ago and they're, you know, already like killing it, like with a million followers and all this, and all this stuff. And, you know, it can be hard not to play that, play that comparison game. Cause it's been hard for me to grow paper, paper, paper and glam. And I've known this since I started it because it's about so many different things. Like you, it's much more advisable if you're trying to grow a following to make it about one particular thing. Like for me, it'd be like either planning or books or God glam or, you know, one piece of paper and glam or lifestyle stuff like seasonal living. But you know, I, I am not like, I, I could never just do a paper and glam. It's about one specific thing that just that's cause that's not, true to who I am. And I don't think that's true to how, you know, you guys are, most people are like, we're not one dimensional like that. But the, the thought is that, you know, every time I post a book club thing, I kind of lose my planning audience. And every time I post a planner thing, I lose my blog audience and vice versa. And so it's, it's true, but I share this because, you know, I think that there's parts of all of our lives where it's, it's slow going and it's slow growth and that's okay. I was talking to a, a friend recently and, you know, her career is growing very, very slowly. And, you know, she looks at my life and I, you know, I, I do what I love every day and she wants that, but like every, we're all called to slow growth. And I don't know, I, I just hope that kind of resonates with you guys maybe a little bit because I think that God's growth is always slow and it's always, it's a deeply rooted growth. And that just stuck out to me so much. And I just can't thank you guys enough for being kind of, you guys that are faithful to book club really are like my core, 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 you know, ride or die paper and fan family. And I just so appreciate you guys making time for this because it really is so important. And I just, I just love that, you know, this sisterhood is growing and it is, it is important, even though sometimes I'm just like, oh, I wish I could bring more continuity and more consistency to the content that, you know, I create for Paper and Glam and I'm working on it every day, but I just, yeah, I just appreciate you guys and I will stop talking your ear off and let's bust out those two read lists because this is like such a fun question. Our last question is, if you love the gift from the sea, what will you also love? So I would say from kind of a thoughts perspective, simple abundance, I can't recommend highly enough. It's much, much longer. So if you found yourself like wanting more from gift from the sea, I would say simple abundance is like right up your alley. Um, I've read it. I'm on my third reading of it and it's just, oh, it's so good. It's also kind of dated now because it was, 
you know, it was written like 30 years ago or no, 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 not 30, uh, no, 25. Yeah. 25 years ago, but it's so good. And then also for the beach theme, I kept thinking of Elin Hildebrand's books. She writes chiclet. She's written 17 chiclet books and they all take place in the beach and they're just like very, very, very vivid beach industries, uh, imagery, excuse me. So if you love, uh, beach, beach chiclet, I would say that, that is a good author for you to investigate. And actually, it's funny. We, I was thinking of her while I was at the beach, and we just got an email for those of you that are Book of the Month that um, her latest book is like on a, a deal with Book of the Month this um, this month that you can add it for your box for a nine ninety nine. And it, I don't even think it's out yet, so that's pretty cool. All right, Hayden, any books that you think really fit well with the Gift from the Sea? Oh wait, sorry. Okay, no, you didn't. Pa oh no, Hayden passes. Okay, sorry. Yeah, unfortunately, in all my science fiction and all that stuff, I don't read a lot of these books. But I'm happy to hear what everyone else has to say. Um, obviously, like Lisa Marie said at the beginning, um, as it is one of her influences, was um, goes really well with this. Um, and as we were sitting here talking about um, like the, the simplicity and making time for um, doing stuff. Um, I know a lot of people are like, I don't know when I'm going to do that. When am I going to fit that in? I need like practical help on how to do that. A book that I've read that has addressed that is The Fringe Hours by Jessica. I think it's in Turner. And she just talks about like making time for you um, in the midst of your busy schedule. So if you're looking for like practical advice on how you can do that, um, a whole book dedicated to that. Um, and what I was going to say earlier that I totally forgot was um, a gift from the sea didn't seem new to me because I've read a lot of books that kind of deal with this. Cause this is like a topic that um, people write about a lot more now than they did in 1955. Um, but like taking time for yourself and um, figuring out who you are so that you can serve others and stuff like that. So I know that there's lots of books out there, but I cannot think of any like specific books other than that Shauna Nyquist is really good at that. And then um, the friends, if you're looking for practical tips on how to do that. So I don't have a good, if you like this, read that, but I realized I didn't answer the icebreaker about what my favorite genre is. And my favorite genre is probably like fantasy, you know, like anything um, not real life, like this heavy book was. <laughs> so that would be, you know, I always have random not related book topics. Oh, actually, I'm listening to Better Than Before right now. Not a direct correlation, but I really like Gretchen Rubin. Um, I forget as far as like nonfiction self-help type books. I really love her books. Um, and I'm super excited for the four tendencies to come out um, and really dive into that. Um, I haven't decided if I'm, for those of you who have read um, better than before, I think I'm an obliger, maybe with a touch of the rebel. Um, so FYI for you guys out there. Um, but so that's, that's a really great book. Uh, I'm learning a lot reading that. So that would be my suggestion, better than before. Oh, what I'm, I'm doing my best you guys to link all of these down below in the resources section. It won't be live until just after the video, but I'm doing my best to link everything. So if you're like scribbling frantically or like, I didn't catch that. Hopefully I caught some of it, but what I didn't catch Sarah was, what did you say? Um, you're really excited for what to come out? The four tendencies. So she has Gretchen Rubin has a new book coming out that is just about like, it's like an offshoot of better than before. It's, like she spells, spends a lot of time on each of the four tendencies. Interesting. That is like, so I'm a huge Gretchen Rubin fan. I've met her in person. I am obsessed with her. Uh, I talk about her all the time. You guys probably know if you've watched my videos, but that's like the four tendency thing was, is like the one thing that she like didn't really resonate with me. I felt like I was like pieces of all of them and it wasn't super helpful for me personally, but I know a lot of people like you, like absolutely loved that piece of the book. So it's interesting that she's chosen to kind of like keep unpacking that. Well, see, I think that's what's going to be so great is because she, I mean, I guess I'm not super far, but I think she's, yeah, really going to unpack each of them. And she spends a lot of time on the obliger and the rebel because they're such complex tendencies. So interesting. Yeah. I'm like a rebel. So that I, I know I'm that one, but 
yeah, I, I don't know. I didn't like, I guess I didn't find it super applicable, but anyway, I will, I don't want to keep, I keep saying like, let's keep it moving. Cause I'm talking your ear off, but we start talking about Gretchen Rubin and all this stuff. And I am just gonna, I'm just like chatty Kathy over here. So let me send you guys on your way. So thank you so much for joining. Like I said, I so appreciate all of you guys, you know, more than words. I know I say it like every video, but I really, really do. Um, you know, one of the things she says in the book is, you know, she kind of quotes the Bible and says, when you lose your life, you find it. And that's especially true of women who uh, find themselves in creative pursuits and paper and glam stuff. I've been, you know, where I found myself, thanks to you guys. So next month we are reading, if you are like, oh, I am ready for a easy, fun, beach read, young adult. A lot of you guys said you loved young adults. So we are young adult next month with summer days and summer nights. It's a collection of really fun, just summer theme stories. It's our seasonal read. And I can't wait to, to read this and just have a fun, fun book club. Well, hopefully they're all fun, but you know, a fun read to go through together and just discuss young love and summer stories and all that stuff. So that's what we are reading next month. Um, I always say it, but grab your Glam Read stickers. There's like 30 or so left and the next ones, either the summer version and the next ones will be fall and winter. So if you want your summer ones, make sure you grab them. They always sell out and these will sell out. It's already imminent on these guys. So grab those. And uh, yeah, and of course the June collection and I'm listing all of the July collection tomorrow. So we are keeping it moving with all things uh, paper and glam too. So that is it for tonight. Thank you guys so much for hanging and I will see you next month, the last Thursday of the month, every, every month this year for summer days and summer nights. Good night.